Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Now that we've taken the impression in a clinical setting, our next task is to make provisional restorations for our patient. One of the things that a custom provisional restoration will do is to help sculpt or shape the emergence profile aspect of the gingiva surrounding our implant. There are a couple things we can have done ahead of time before the patient ever comes in that makes the fabrication of the provisional restorations much easier. If ahead of time we had a study model of our patient, one of the things we can do is when this model has had the diagnostic setup done on it, we can lubricate the model with some Vaseline or some triad model release agent, take a piece of gauze or a cotton roll and wipe away all the excess of the Vaseline, take a quadrant tray and simply take a PVS impression of our diagnostic setup. So this PVS impression is taken right on our study model. So if this is made ahead of time, it's quite a help. In the area where we have a single tooth replacement, we may either set a single tooth in that area and make an impression as we did on the other side, or we can take a prefabricated aluminum shell crown form, which is available from the desk for bicuspids, as well as molars. Also at the desk, they have polycarbonate crown forms. And so we have these plastic polycarbonate crown forms that come in different sizes. And we can also take a polycarbonate crown form and see if we pick out one that's an appropriate size for the space of the tooth that's to be replaced. If we happen to choose one of the polycarbonate crown forms, what we want to do is take an acrylic burr and contour the cervical aspect of the polycarbonate crown form and just shape that by trial and error so that we're able to place that crown form on our cast and see that the marginal ridge area seems to be pretty even with the marginal ridge of the teeth on either side and that the adaptation we have at the cervical aspect shows fairly good adaptation. And again, this can be done ahead of time before the patient ever comes to the appointment. When it comes to the areas of the molars, again, we can take an aluminum shell crown form. They don't have the polycarbonate crown forms for molars, but if we take an aluminum shell crown form for a molar, it also could be recontoured at the cervical to see that it's just about the right shape. Now one of the things that's very convenient that we can do with the aluminum shell crown forms is to simply fill the aluminum shell crown form with self-curing acrylic. Basically pour the self-curing acrylic into the aluminum shell crown form and then simply when it's set peel away the aluminum shell crown form. So what we have is if this is the aluminum shell crown form and I fill it with acrylic, allow the acrylic to set up and then just peel away the aluminum shell crown form, I get a pretty good copy of that tooth in our repair acrylic. And once the acrylic has set up or polymerized inside the aluminum shell crown form, what I can do is just carefully place this on my laboratory bench, take the tip, the pointy tip of the cleoid discoid, stabilize my aluminum shell crown form, and work the edge of the cleoid discoid. So what we've done now is we just peel off the aluminum shell crown form, and we're left with a solid plastic tooth. Now again, if I have my study model, my model before the implants were ever done, I can place this solid plastic tooth in position and adjust the contacts if necessary. And the other thing I want to do is to turn this over, take my acrylic burr and just contour the underside of this, contour the cervical aspect of this until I've got this adjusted so that this solid plastic tooth fits the crest of the ridge very nicely there and it does a good job of being even 
with the marginal ridges on either side. The next thing that's done with either whether it's the molars or whether it's the bicuspids is just to take an acrylic burr and hollow out the inside of the plastic tooth. And I had done the same thing to the molars. That is, poured the plastic into the aluminum shell crown form, removed the crown form, contoured the cervical of the tooth, and then proceeded to just hollow it out. So what I now have in preparation for seeing my patient are these hollowed out teeth, and I fabricated these teeth by just pouring acrylic into aluminum shell crown forms, peeling the aluminum shell crown form away, and then hollowing out the plastic on the inner aspect. Now another thing that we can make ahead of time besides the teeth to make this process go very easily is to take an analog. What we can do to make our temporization process go very quickly is to take a dappen dish of liquid and a dappen dish of powder of our self-curing acrylic, come along with a paintbrush and just paint a little bit of acrylic on the perimeter of the analog to make a thin coping. What I will do is go ahead and paint around the circumference of the analog so I don't cover the entire analog. I cover half to two-thirds of the analog, set this aside and let it set up completely. When it's completely set up, I can firmly hold the base of the analog with my fingers, take a plaster knife or a buffalo knife, and using my thumb as a fulcrum, place the buffalo knife on here and work this bit of acrylic so it comes off and on my analog. What I then do is once I see that this is free and comes off and on, I go ahead and proceed with painting, dip in the liquid, pick up some powder, and paint the remainder of the circumference. So ahead of time, what I've made for my patient is this thin sleeve or coping for both the regular size and the wide body implants, whichever one I'm restoring. So now let's come back to our patient. We've taken our impression. We observe this area for the single tooth. I've made this thin coping ahead of time. I can very easily just slide this coping on over my abutment that's been screwed in place. The next thing I can do is take either the polycarbonate crown form and make sure that it freely fits over the top of the coping that I've made. Or I can take the denture tooth that I have hollowed out and make sure I've hollowed it out enough so that it freely fits over the top of the coping I've made. At this point in time, it's a fairly easy matter to just place some additional self-curing acrylic inside my hollowed out tooth, set it on over the coping, and allow that to polymerize and set up. When the two are married together, here's my thin coping or my thin sleeve that I made to fit over the abutment. And I can place that right on my patient so this fits in very nicely. And then what is very nice about these provisionals is they really do help sculpt or mold the gingival tissues so that the emergence profile of this provisional is better than some of the prefabricated sleeves, temporary sleeves that can be fitted on. So as this provisional is worn, it's literally helping to sculpt or shape the inner contours of the gingival cuff. So when we go to cement our definitive crown, it's not a difficult procedure at all. So that would be the procedure for a single tooth implant. If we go to a multiple tooth implant, which we have on the other side of the arch, what I have done in preparation for that is made two of these sleeves that will fit down very nicely over the top of my abutments. Now what I may do, if I have made an Omnivac ahead of time, or if I have taken an impression, or my Omnivac, either one, and seat that right down over those copings that I made, and let the acrylic polymerize, and then that acrylic will bond to the two copings, giving me very nice marginal adaptation and a good external contour. So we have an example 
of a completed provisional that would be a splinted provisional that would go in place where we have two adjacent implants in the posterior region. If one had made the individual teeth using the aluminum shell crown form, pouring acrylic into the aluminum shell crown form, one would do a similar technique, only you would just hollow out the tooth, fit it over the coping very well, and lute one together. You would then go ahead and lute the second one over the second coping, and then you could very easily come back with acrylic and just join the two together with a little more acrylic. When it's all done, we want to have our patient able to have a nice provisional restoration that will help sculpt or form the gingival contours for our final crown. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.